All right, hi kids. Um, welcome to your next um, unit of learning. Uh, this unit will be on angles, okay? So um, let's just go ahead and get started. So your first notes today will be on what's called intro to angles. Intro to angles, okay? Draw your line down. Draw your line across. Let's go ahead and write EQ. Okay, and our EQ today is, um, let's say, what are the three ways, or what are the ways you can name angles? There's more than three, that's why I uh, wanted to erase it. What are the three ways you can name angles, okay? What are the different ways you can name angles? So angles, okay, not angels, angles. Angles are created um, by the joining of two lines or two um, line segments that meet at a vertex. So when two um, lines or rays join and meet at a vertex okay when two lines or rays join to meet at a vertex so if i have that dot there this little symbol here that kind of looks like a half circle that's what we use to show the angle between this ray and this ray okay um, it could look like this. Um, okay, that's showing you the angle that goes from that ray to that ray. Another way we do it, some of you have seen this before, that shows that it's a 90 degree angle. Okay, that means it's a straight up and down 90 degree angle. Let me just make sure it's a really good 90 degree angle. Okay. So when we um, when we talk about angles, it's important to know it's it's the spot in between. Okay, it's not the spot around; it's the spot in between the two rays or line segments. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to move on to how we name them. So it kind of answers your essential question today. Okay, naming angles. Okay, so let's go ahead and give an example. Um, my name's Chloe um, Ruffin Minch. Okay, and then we'll put an, um, an angle and we'll put my favorite number eight in there. So there's lots of different ways to, to name this angle. Okay, so we use this little symbol here that means the angle at R, okay, because it's the angle made at vertex R. We could see the angle at eight. That means the angle made where the eight is. We could see the angle formed by connecting C, R, and M. Chloe, Ruffin, Minch, okay? The, the vertex is in the middle. Or you could say the angle that connects Minch, R, Ruffin, and Chloe. So Minch, Ruffin, Chloe. So there's four different ways you can name angles. You can name it by the vertex. If there's a number or a letter there. And then you can name it by the uh, points that connect it with the vertex in the middle. Okay. It's just good to know that. So in case on a, um, a, a worksheet or a paper, it asks you, um, what's the measure at angle CRM? you know that it's what it takes to get from C to R to M. So it's the angle created in between those, okay? This might be a review for some of you, but it's always good to kind of refresh our brain on this stuff. Now, um, there's different ways to classify angles. Now, I know not a lot of you, oh, I can't find it. I know not a lot of you have a protractor at home, so I'm not gonna make any of the assignments be using a protractor. I'll kind of model that later, but none of the assignments will be used to, um, where you have to use it. But we, di we do classify angles with uh, many different terms, okay? And these ones you, you've, um, you've heard quite a bit, so we're just gonna call this classifying angles. Okay, classifying angles, so using information about it to, to know what it is. 
So just as a reminder, there's some good angles to always know, okay? If you have a straight line, okay, and my angle is like that, there's not really a vertex there. I mean, you could technically say it's in the middle, but that is 180 degrees, okay? So if I was to use my protractor, I put the hole on the vertex, I line up this black line here. I go on the inside numbers all the way around, and I'd see that this line goes through the 180 mark, okay? So 180 degrees. Okay, we just call this a straight angle. Okay, some more angles that are good to know. An L, okay, that is a 90 degree angle. We use this symbol to designate that it is a 90 degree angle. We call this a right angle. Okay. So two important angles to kind of know for, for the, um, the rest of this unit, okay? Um, more important things to know about angles. If the angle is less than, okay, if the angle, is less than 90 degrees, we call it an acute angle. You've heard all those things before. Oh, it's a little cute angle. So if it's less than 90, it's acute. So anything that's less than a straight up and down L is an acute angle. Any angle that is greater than 90 degrees, is what we call an obtuse angle. Okay, so it's anything that's bigger than an L. So if it stretches at all, it's an L. And then um, if it is um, a straight angle, it's uh, a, a 180. Give me one second, I gotta do something really quickly. Okay, and then also what's important to know is it's greater than 90 is obtuse, but it also needs to be less than 180. So we know that acute angles are less than 90. We know that obtuse angles are greater than or less, greater than 90 and less than 180. So anything that is between an L and small is acute. Anything between an L and a straight angle is what we call obtuse, okay? So we, again, we have four different terms here. Straight is 180 degrees, okay? We have a right angle, 90 degrees. We have acute, anything less than 90. And obtuse is anything greater than 90, but less than a straight angle, less than 180. So uh, um, obtuse angles would go in, in, in that range, okay? All right, and we have a couple more um, angle terms I just wanna get to, and that can help us out, okay? Um, actually that I think that that'll be kind of um, that'll be kind of it for today um, I'm gonna practice teaching you how to use a protractor um, so if you don't have one that's okay it's good to just estimate or maybe you could find some free ones online like protractor or stuff but let's just use one using a pro tractor all right when we go to use a protractor we always put the vertex in center hole okay so on my on my protractor, my center hole has a little hole in it, which is really nice, it's clear. Sometimes it doesn't have that. Okay, so that's where I would line up my vertex is in that center hole, okay? See this black line here, it's like a guiding line. I put my bottom ray or line on that. Bottom ray or line on guiding line. Okay. The next thing you do is you then count the inside numbers. See how there's two numbers? It's kind of confusing. We're going to count from the inside numbers all the way out. So use inside numbers. Ooh, oh, that was a terrible S. Okay. And then we um, top ray. Um, gives us 
angle. Okay. So let's go ahead and practice this, okay? So vertex in the center hole, check. Line up the, the um, bottom ray on, or line on this black guiding line. Use the inside numbers to count, and then wherever your other ray is, your top ray is, that is your angle. You match it up. Okay, so let's go ahead and keep this here, and then I'm gonna just, um, here, I'll rip out a piece of paper, and we'll just do it right below it. Okay, so let's keep those in mind. I'm going to leave that there to keep that in mind for us when we go into discovering angles. So if I had this angle here, okay, we'll, we'll call it uh, JDM or Jonathan David Mitch, okay? And let's say the question asked me, at uh, first, um, I, you know, classify the angle. So if I had to classify it, I'd go back. I know it's not a right angle. I know it's not a straight angle, it's not flat. I know it's not acute, it's not less than 90. Oh, it's in between a 90 and a 180. So first off, I'm gonna just say what I know about this for sure is it's an obtuse angle. Okay. Now I can also know that I could call this angle D. I could call this angle J, D, M. I could call this angle M, D, J. These are just bullets showing my answers, okay? So obtuse, angle D, angle JDM. Um, his favorite number, what's your favorite number, 250? 251? If this was angle 251, I could call it angle 251. Okay, so if I wanted to measure this, I already know it's going to be, um, what's cool about classifying angles is I know it's already gonna be more than 90 and less than 180 because it's obtuse. So I'm gonna take my protractor, I'm gonna line up my center hole, on the vertex. I'm now going to take that black guiding line and lay it flat. Black guiding line needs to be laid flat on the bottom ray like it says. I'm going to count using the inside numbers until I find where my angle is. I know it's going to be oh, about over here. Let me zoom this out. Okay. I know it's going to be somewhere over here. Now shoot, I have to kind of eyeball that. So what I'm going to do, here's a good trick is you can take your ruler, line it up with your vertex in your ray, and you can extend your angle so that way you can see it better where it hits on the protractor. So I just took my ruler and extended it. Okay, so oh, I can practice my skills again. Line up the center hole in the vertex, line up the black line, line up my bottom ray on the black line, so see it's matching. Go on the inside numbers, go across, and it's gonna hit, it looks like it about that's 145, that's 150, so I'd say that's about 143. So I would say the measure of this angle is 143. So it is, measure of the angle um, is 140, 143 degrees. I put the degrees there to show that it's not the number, it's how many degrees it takes up. So I would say that angle is 143 degrees. So it's just a good practice to show you kind of how you can use a protractor to uh, measure the angle, but I can use my clues, like knowing that it's obtuse. I know it was gonna be more than 90 and less than 180. So 143 fits that. I could call it angle D, angle JDM, angle MDJ, and angle 251. Thanks kids.